Now, what happens then when you introduce technology into production? You produce enormous quantities of goods by technological methods. But at the same time, you put people out of work. You can say, oh, but it always creates more jobs. There will always be more jobs, yes. But they will be f lots of them will be futile jobs. They will be jobs making every kind of frippery and unnecessary contraption. And one will also, at the same time, have to beguile the public into feeling that they need and want these completely unnecessary things that aren't even be beautiful. And therefore, an enormous amount of nonsense employment and busy work, bureaucratic and otherwise, it has to be created in order to keep people working. Because we believe, as good Protestants, that the devil finds work for idle hands to do. But the basic principle of the whole thing has been completely overlooked. That the purpose of the machine is to make drudgery unnecessary. And if we don't allow it to achieve its purpose, we live in a constant state of self-frustration. So then if a given manufacturer automates his plant and dismisses his labor force, and they have to uh, operate on a very much diminished income, say some sort of dole, the manufacturer suddenly finds that the public does not have the wherewithal to buy his products. And therefore he has invested in this expensive autom automotive machinery to no purpose. And therefore, obviously, uh, the public has to be provided with the means of purchasing what the machines produce. But people say, that's not fair. Where's the money going to come from? Who's going to pay for it? The answer is the machine. The machine pays for it. Because the machine works for the manufacturer and for the community. This is not saying, you see, that uh, this is not the uh, statist uh, communist idea that uh, you expropriate the manufacturer and say you can't own and run this factory anymore, it is owned by the government. It is only saying that the government or the people have to be responsible for issuing to themselves sufficient credit to circulate the goods they are producing and have to balance the measuring standard of money with the gross national product. That means that taxation is obsolete, completely obsolete. It ought to go the other way, Theobald points out, that every individual should be assured of a minimum income. Now, you see, that absolutely horrifies most people. Say, all these wastrels, these people who uh, are out of a job because they're really lazy, see, uh, given them money? Yeah. Because otherwise, the machines can't work. They come to blockage. This was the situation of the Great Depression. When here we were still, in a material sense, a very rich country, with plenty of fields and farms and mines and factories, everything going. But suddenly, because of a psychological hang-up, because of a mysterious uh, mumbo-jumbo about uh, the, the economy, about the banking, we were all miserable and poor, starving in the midst of plenty, just because of a psychological hang-up. And that hang-up is that money is real, and that uh, people ought to suffer in order to get it. But the whole point of the machine is to relieve you of that suffering. It is an ingenuity. And you see, we are um, psychologically back in the 17th century, and technically in the 20th. And here comes the problem. So, uh, what we have to find out how to do is to change the psychological attitude to money and to wealth, and furthermore to pleasure, and furthermore to the nature of work.